Good evening and welcome to the Board of Appeals. My name is Nick Gray. I'll be the acting chairman for this meeting. Uh, with me tonight are board members Brian Conley and sorry, uh, Giselle Joffrey. Is it Joffrey? Sorry. Joffer. Joffer. Sorry. See, this is our, this is our our first meeting together. And no, thank you for and asking. I hadn't, heard your, hadn't heard your name pronounced. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be the last name I mispronounced tonight. So uh, apologies for that. Not at all. Um, anyway, so the, the procedure of the board will be to, um, we'll we have three hearings on for tonight. We'll, in each case, we'll hear from the applicant first who will explain, uh, you know, present the case. Uh, then there'll be an opportunity for the board members to ask questions of the applicant. <clears throat> Following that, we'll have uh, an opportunity for members of the public uh, here on Zoom to uh, ask questions of the applicant, and then we'll hear from people who are uh, want to speak in support of the applicant and anyone in opposition. And once we've, uh, uh, at the end, we'll give the op the applicant a, a final chance if they need it to uh, respond or make uh, add any additional material, and then the board will close the evidentiary hearing and consider the case uh, in open session. Um, so with that uh, basic ground rules, let's let's go to the uh, 7.30 hearing, which is uh, uh, an application of, sorry, uh, Mar Margie or Margie? Margie? Margie. Margie Skier and Casey Corker of, I wrote it down somewhere, sorry, um, 95 Granite Place in Milton. And um, what I'll do first is, is sort of uh, just recite the evidence that we've got, uh, we've received so far, and then I'm going to turn it over to you guys to do the talking, all right? So the first thing is I'm going to take read the legal notice into the record. <clears throat> so um, Margie and Casey have filed a, uh, a, an application with the Board of Appeals for a special permit, uh, for us to grant a special permit from the, uh, under the terms of section, sorry, a special permit under the terms of section four of the bylaw uh, for a finding that um, the change that they wish to make under uh, section six C1 side yards of the uh, Milton zoning bylaw, that's the section that's in, uh, in, in controversy. Uh, the applicants proposed to build a 29 foot by 11 and a half foot dormer addition on the second level of the left side of their home located at 95 Granite Place, which is located in a residence C zoning district. A plot plan dated uh, January 20th, uh, 2021 shows that this addition would be built at a distance of 8.3 feet from the left side uh, property line when 10 feet are normally required by section 6C1 of the bylaw. The home was built in approximately 1931 as a single family home and is considered dimensionally pre-existing non-conforming. <clears throat> this dormer addition as proposed would violate section 6C1 of the Milton zoning bylaw. Therefore, the applicants are asking us to provide a finding um, that in the form of a special permit that this proposed change is not more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists. So that's the, the essence of the legal notice. Uh, the file that um, the board has received uh, contains the following elements. We've got an application uh, for a special permit from the applicants. We have the denial letter from Mr. Prodnack, the Prodnack, the building inspector, as to uh, the building permit for this uh, dormer addition. We have a uh, plot plan produced by Antonio Land Surveyors which is, I'm looking for the date on it, but it basically outlines the, uh, outlines the diagram of the property and explains where the proposed addition is going to be located. It's dated January 20th, 2021. Um, we have four arc, a, a set of architectural plans, four sheets that describe the uh, addition from various, the proposed addition from various angles. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else. The board has also received um, a number of letters of support uh, from abutters uh, and for the application. I'll just go over those very briefly now. We have um, a letter from Todd and Eva Greenwood at 86 Granite Place in Milton, which uh, in which they say that the purpose of this letter is to inform the board of, uh, of their intention to renovate. Oh, no, this is your letter to them. I see an iron sign, sorry. You basically sent a letter to a number of your neighbors and asked them to sign, describing the project in a sentence. So that's the, basically the, the letter is describing the project 
And I'll just recite the addresses that have signed off on it. That's just to save time. So we've got your neighbors at 86 Granite Place, the Greenwoods. You have uh, your neighbors, the Greens, who live at 96 Granite Place have, us, have uh, agreed to this. You have James Colbert and Teresa Doyle at 99 Granite Place have uh, also signed a letter. Um, you have a letter from Anthony and Kathleen Cassis of 115 Granite Place. And uh, another letter from Gail Johnson of 5 Howard Street and 87 Granite Place. And finally, one from David Johnson Sr. of 6 Howard Street and 10 Howard Street. And in looking at my, my little map here, that's most of the most of the properties that surround your uh, most of your direct abutters. So with that lengthy um, uh, introduction, I'm happy to hear what the why don't you guys proceed with your uh, your presentation. Welcome to the Board of Appeals. Thank you so much. And um, so I'm Margie and and you can see Casey. Casey's not feeling great. So I'm, I'm going to speak. And if he needs to jump out because he's not feeling great, um, I hope you'll excuse him. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you so much for having us and for hearing um, our petition. We have been in Milton for seven years. We bought here, we've lived in the Boston area for 20 years and decided to move to a neighborhood when our, our oldest child who's now um, closing in on 13 is in Pierce Middle School when he was starting kindergarten. And so we were looking for a neighborhood and that we could raise our children in and found this wonderful house at 95 Granite Place and have loved living there. Um, love our neighborhood, love Milton. We're just, we couldn't be happier. But our current house is, is a little bit limited for what our what we'd like our needs to be. And our proposal is to basically build up and not even completely up, a little bit in and up from the current structure. So it's not going out any further than it already is. And we wanna open it up so that we can create three bedrooms um, and a bathroom on our second floor so that we can be on the same floor and be with our children um, and have our children continue to be raised in this house. And we, we just expanded our family to a dog as well um, during the pandemic. You and everyone else. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. We got our little pandemic puppy. Um, and it would just, it would give us the, the continued space to, um, to you know, raise our family through our children uh, growing up and, and leaving the home maybe. Um, and so that's what we're asking for this evening because, we, and we feel that it doesn't make the neighborhood any sort of worse off than the current, um, the, the current space from the, um, from our plot plan is because again, it's, it's going not even completely out and up. It's coming in a little bit and going up and our neighbor who would be most affected by it is very supportive of the project who we share a driveway with. So, um, we're asking for for the appeal. All right, thank you very much. Very well presented. Let's see if any of uh, my fellow board members have any questions. Mr. Conley, do you wanna say anything? Sure, um, thank you for your time tonight. The, um, and thank you in particular for all your effort and outreach to your neighbors. I looked, I think like uh, Nick did at the map and if I have it right, you've got 99 granite, which is the house immediately to your left. 87 granite, the one immediately to your right, 10 Howard immediately to your right and rear, 5 Howard to the rear, 96 Howard across the street. So I think that's every house that surrounds you. And then you threw in 86 granite, 6 Howard and 115 granite just for good measure. So that's fantastic. And it's great um, sort of evidence to the board that your neighbors think this is not substantially detrimental um, you know, to the neighborhood as well. Um, and thanks for the, you know, they've got some thoughtful architectural plans that show what you're building. I couldn't see on the plans, um, who is the architect? Or maybe I just missed it when I was looking for the, for the name. So his name is Sal P Pilaretti, um, Pilateri, sorry. Um, I can get you, if it would be helpful, I can get you the spelling of his name. Um, or, or firm if, um. You know, we often will reference the, I should ask, uh, is your, uh, we would expect the, the building would be built in conformance with the plans that you provided. Yes. And um, so we would often want to make reference to those plans in any decision the board makes. Um, and so it'd be helpful. I think we see uh, some, some address and, and date names, but it'd be helpful to know the name of the architect as well. Yeah, so I can, I'm gonna, um, it, is there a chat function here? I can't put it in the chat, but his name is Sal P 
Pelletary, P-E-L-L-I-T-T-E-R-I. And um, he actually drew the plans for our neighbor at 99 who had the variance hearing a couple of years ago and had her construction done. So that's where we got his name from them. Um, and and I could try to get you a, a firm name. He's He does indep more independent um, architectural drawings. Okay. Well, that's great. That's helpful. Uh, thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Oh, I thank you very much, Mr. Connolly. Ms. Joffrey, Joffrey, do you have anything you would like to ask? Um, sure. And I'm, I'm sure this is evident from the plans, but um, I'll, I'll ask anyway. How much space are you, are you adding in terms of square feet? I think it's approximately 300. Okay. And you mentioned that you wanted to have three bedrooms on the same level. Yes. Um, how many bedrooms are you adding? Two. Two. Okay. Um, and I, I think that's it for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So I, I only have a couple of questions. First of all, the, and I, I think I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this. So it's, it, it's not a trick question. I just like to get it on the record. Will the, uh, are you intending that this dormer addition will be, uh, trimmed and painted and designed in a way that will fit in with the rest of the architecture of the house? Absolutely. You're not, you're not expecting to paint it, you know, a different color from the, from the rest of the house or anything? No, no. We actually painted our house a few years ago and we will use the same color. All right. And I, I mean, I took a look online at sort of the neighborhood, but it wouldn't hurt to put on the record also are um, the, uh, would you say that after the, this restoration, uh, sorry, after the, if we were to grant the special permit after the construction, would the house be substantially similar to other houses in the neighborhood in terms of massing and size? Absolutely. The house across the street from us ha is a colonial. Um, so it, in terms of stature, it would match the one right across the street from us. Yeah. The, the um, at 99, immediately the one that we share a driveway with, mm -hmm. um, which again, those are sort of the two houses that are most um, proximal, proximal to our house. Uh, they actually have a shed dormer in the front. So it, it they did that a, a couple years ago as well. So yeah. it would match that even more so. And then the other house that would be sort of closest to ours in terms of um, visual would be across the street and over one and they're also a colonial. So it, it would actually probably match our neighbor's houses even more so that's than- what was, That's what I was thinking. Currently that's does. Right. Thank, you for, thank you for getting that on the record. Sure. Um, I think that's those are all the questions I have. Let's see if there are uh, any members of the public that have a question of the applicants. Ms. Sutton, over to you. Any hands raised? There are no hands. There are no, no hands. All right. What about, is there anyone uh, out there in public in Zoom land, as Mr. Leonard would say, who would uh, like to uh, speak in support of the application? We have one. Kathy Cassis, is it? All right. You're on, Kathy. Kathy, welcome to the Board of Appeals. Can you hear me now? Right, there you are. Yeah, You're exactly. unmuted now. So, um, I live three houses down the street from Casey and Margie, and um, I think that this would be a welcome um, change in the neighborhood. I think their house is a little bit smaller compared to a lot of the other houses in the neighborhood, um, but I think the, the changes that they're proposing would be a benefit to the neighborhood and keeping them as neighbors on the street uh, and in the town of Milton would be um, an asset to the town and to the neighbors on the street. So I fully support it. Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in support of the application? All right, that being said, now the, the, the $30,000 question, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the application? Well, I think we, we have no one. We have no hands. Very good. Well, then, if <laughs> is there uh, any? That being said, uh, is there um, any additional information that the applicants would like to provide? Since there was no 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 one would, you, there's nothing to rebut. So um, you don't have to. You may want to quit while you're ahead. <laughs> we, we just appreciate your consideration for this. Right. Uh, all right, very good. Well, in that case, I'm going to close the evidence portion of the hearing and we'll move to discuss uh, discuss, discuss your, your application in open session. So uh, 
Do either of my board members like to, would like to speak first? Sure. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think this is a, uh, a good project. Um, it's a well-designed expansion of the house. Um, they, uh, the owners have done a great job talking to the neighbors who've written and testified in favor, um, indicating that the changes will be an improvement, um, not just to this house, but to the neighborhood. Uh, I think they've demonstrated it won't be a substantial detriment. And so I think we should support um, the requested finding. Very good. Giselle? I'm also in agreement of supporting the finding. I think that, you know, we're aware that a lot of homes in Milton don't have the most family friendly layout. And I appreciate that the effort to um, conform it to their, their growing families use. And like Brian, I think it's very, very helpful that you've taken your neighbor's point of view into consideration because they will be sort of, you know, most immediately impacted. And it seems that um, they're in full support. So I am too. Thank you very much. And I'm in total agreement with my uh, fellow board members. I think that your application was well presented. I too appreciate the fact that you made the effort to get the, uh, you know, assent of so many of your neighbors and talk to them about the project. That's uh, really good. And I also recognize that that your particular addition um, is, in, in, in my view, is no way a detriment to the neighborhood. It would, in fact, be an improvement to the neighborhood for, m for many of the reasons that you stated. But it, it, it's also, it, it is of a size and scale. It, it, it does the job that you need it to, and it fits in with the, with the, with the rest of the neighborhood. And in the case of you know, a house that was built uh, as your house was prior to zoning, we only need to find that it, the, the, it's less of a standard than a variance, right? So we only need to find that th this is no more, no worse than what was there before in terms of the uh, nonconformity, right? And as you pointed out in your, your explanation, the dormer, in fact, is, is intrudes into the setback less than the current, um, the current house does. So um, for all of those reasons, I, I too am in, in favor of granting the application. So let's take a formal vote. All those in favor of approving the uh, uh, the application for the special permit tonight, as please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. All right. Well, congratulations. Your uh, application. Thank you. Three nothing. And um, so the the next steps are that the one of one of the board members will write a, a written decision. Um, basically, uh, you know. It, basically, uh, you know, documenting what we've decided tonight. And uh, that will then get filed uh, with the town clerk. Bev, tell me if I'm going off the rails here. Uh, it'll get filed with the town, with the town clerk. Then there's, that starts a clock running. There's an appeal period. I think it's 20 days. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if no one appeals to the court within that 20 day period, then your building permit can be issued and you're off and running. All right. So the, okay. the, those are the next steps. Great. So, so maybe sometime in early mid July, we could expect potentially. Yeah. Uh, well, with any luck, I mean, it, it does. It probably will. In 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 fact, it'll probably take us a, a week or two to crank out the decision. Okay. And then start the clock running after that. The, the you know, but uh, but we'll get it out as you know as quickly as we can because well, I'm sure you're anxious to begin <laughs> begin adding the space uh, yes uh, last uh, month <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but we understand the process so we'll, we'll, we'll be patient all right, all right. any other questions comments mr Conley? you look like you were about to say something no, if, if you want I'll, I'll volunteer to draft this decision thank you very much mr Conley. it's uh, all yours great thank, thank you, you. So much. Thank you very and, much. and and we just want to um say thank you so much to all of you and and also a special thank you to bev who's been really incredible with just you know helping us understand the process and make sure that we get everything in so thank you so much bev absolutely we uh Happy we could help. manage this without bev that yes. is sure <laughs> it'd be a nightmare all right thank you very much and congratulations thank on your that. special permit thank you so much everybody have a great evening be in touch yep bye just one moment, we'll get ready with the next hearing. All right.
do I promote the attendee as participant? I think, yeah. That's well. Tell me, I don't know the answer. Though. I do, I think I'm going to answer is yes. Yeah, Th thank you. Behind the scenes. I thought so. All right, are we ready for the, ah, because that's the important part. Do we have an applicant <laughs> ready to ready for our eight, four, sorry, our 745 hearing? Uh, looks like the applicant is ready to go. There they are. Yep. <laughs> All right. So I'll just, um, uh, I'll just, uh, hi, I'm Nick Ray. I'm the chairman of the board, acting chairman of the board of appeals for tonight. And uh, with me is uh, board member Brian Conley and uh, Giselle Joffer. And we're uh, going to have the 745 hearing of the board of appeals now, which is uh, property located at 290 Granite Avenue in Milton. Uh, the applicant is Shirley Chen. And uh, I will, uh, what I'll do is I'll read the legal notice into the record and I'll talk about the evidence and then I'll turn it over to you uh, to the applicant to make a presentation. All right. So uh, let's see. So uh, Jonathan Fung and Shirley Chen of uh, 290 Granite Avenue have filed an application on January 20th, 2021 with the Board of Appeals seeking to build a 30 foot by 40 foot by two story addition on the left side of their home located at 290 Granite Avenue. Included in this proposed addition is a temporary apartment on the second floor of this new addition of approximately 690 square feet. The property lies in a residence C zoning district. The home was built in approximately 1900 as a single, fa a single family uh, and is considered dimensionally pre-existing non-conforming. A plot plan dated November 7, 2020 shows that this addition would conform to the dimensional requirements of the zoning by bylaw. The property lies in a residence C zoning district. Milton bylaws section three use regulations subsection A9, detached one family dwelling with temporary apartment permits the creation of a complete and separate dwelling unit within a single family home upon the issuance of a special permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals for a period of time, not more than four years and subject to certain prescribed conditions. Further, subsection 3A9F prescribes that the temporary apartment be located entirely within an existing structure. Therefore, the applicants seek two things. They're seeking the issuance of a special permit pursuant to section two a9 of the zoning bylaw, that might be 3A9, it looks like a typo. Uh, since the bylaw requires that the temporary apartment be constructed in uh, an existing house, the applicants also seek the issuance of a variance in order to construct the temporary apartment as they construct the new addition. This will save considerable time and expense and will facilitate the applicants, mother-in-law and father-in-law to move into the temporary uh, in-law apartment. The applicants contend it would be a financial and personal hardship for the applicants to have to comply with the sequencing of the projects as required by the bylaw. All is set forth in the application uh, and on file and uh, with the board and open to public inspection. So the record, uh, the material submitted with the application, at least the part that I've received, consists of the application itself, uh, a denial letter from the uh, building inspector um, concerning uh, dis discussing the need for the variance for having a uh, from subsection 9a uh, concerning the sorry subsection 3a9f about the apartment being completely located within the existing structure. What else do we have? We've got some architectural plans consisting of three sheets, I think, and uh, two letters of support. One from your neighbors, the Godfrey's at 296 Granite Avenue, and another from, it's a little hard to read because of the copy I've got, but it looks like Richard Delando, apologies if I've mispronounced your name, sir, uh, of <laughs> Nine Emerson Road in Milton. With all, so that consists of the record that uh, we have, and with that, I'd like let's hear from the applicants. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Board of Appeals. Good evening all, can you guys all hear me okay? Yes. Yes, so um, a couple corrections that could be due to the changes we made. I think uh, Joel Prondack provided an updated plan. I think the square footage calculated should be 736 square feet. 
for the enlargement is still that's still within the 800 square feet um, okay. uh, temporary limit, I think, uh, unit limit. And the support letter, we got further support letter from um, 19 Emerson as well as 15 Amazon Road um, later on in the process. Um, okay. I think uh, Beth uh, probably got those a little bit later. So I apologize. Um, so as you mentioned, um, nice intro introduction, very complicated with the code section. I, I can't remember, rephrase the code section. So what we would like to do, so due to the pandemic, our uh, my mother-in-law and father-in-law have been living with us since last March. They don't drive, they both retired. Um, we have to drive them to doctor appointments and getting medications. So um, we also, on our second floor, we all currently only have two bedrooms. We have two kids, uh, one's three-year-old, one is seven. So uh, we are thinking to just do the addition, one additional bedroom as well as uh, built in this in-law unit so that um, it, it will better fit our uh, space limitation currently. Um, having the in-laws and the kids um, now I have a daughter and a son, so they both live in the same bedroom. Mm -hmm. So that's not ideal. So uh, we are doing this. Everything is conform. I think uh, setback and zoning wise conform by law. It's just what we are asking here is really would be very cost effective if we can do all this at once rather than have it build and then ask for in-law permit and then take down everything, repipe everything. Um, that's why we've been waiting since January. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else you would like to tell us about your project? Um, we would like to start as soon as possible. We have the, so if, if, if we could get consent from the Board of Appeal would be, um, very appreciative by by the family because we can get that extra space for the family for my in-laws as well as for my kids to have the extra bedroom on the second floor all right very good let's see if any of my fellow board members have any questions Ms. joffer would you like to ask anything um how long do you anticipate the the project to take when it's phased in the way that you propose um, I am hoping within half a year, but I think what I've been told by um, everyone, like contractors, said there's delayed on everything. I, I, I'm still hoping to be able to finish the foundation, the framing before the end of the year, so that we can have it ready for the winter months um, to just if if we need the time to work the inside. That's what we hope. Okay. I'm like, that's really a late, late again for three more months. I was like, talk, getting, you're talking to Beth uh, in, back in April when we got the extension. I understand a lot of projects going on. And it, it sounds, it sounds as if you're saying it would be impractical to stage it in the way that's sort of required. And that's why you're requesting the variance. Can you just speak to me a little bit about that impracticality? Um, so if, if you did do it in two stages. Oh, if I did it in two stages, I would need to build the extra space, the additions without, I think really what we're asking here is the piping for the kitchen, right? If that's really the, 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 the main we're asking here. So it doesn't, should not impact the neighborhood when you think about it, because everything is uh, by law required by law is there. It's really when the piping is done at the same time when you do the construction, it helps us and it saves time instead of taking down walls again uh, after the project's being done. And then the, board, the appeal process is very time consuming with the 40B going on too. So uh, we started the application in January. Now we are in June. So that's already five months. So I don't want to have it ready build and then wait another half a year and then do more work. It just the, the timing and the cost, more cost effective, right? We, we are 
um, really asking, I think everything is accordance by the law. It's not that we are asking something. It's just in order, how would it being done together would be much easier and uh, faster manner. It would not, instead of the three, four months, it's probably gonna have to expand to a year or more, right? Thank you, that's very helpful. No further questions. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Brian, do you have anything you would like to ask? Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you for um, your patience during a busy time uh, with the zoning board and, um, and for your time tonight. The um, uh, Take a look at the plans and I think you mentioned they've been revised and just to make sure for the record, we're all looking at the right plans. I have, I guess a three sheet set of plans we received and they have sort of a um, handwriting in the first sheet that says temporary apartment 736 square feet. And is that the most recent version of the plans? Yeah, I think Joe, um, so the focus of the, the plan is really the in-law unit, what yep. Joe helped us circle. So it's really, yep. that's the focus of the in-law. And also I think the second sheet of the plan has, what if that right. is removed? Plan showing kitchen removal. Right. Yeah, that's the, really yeah. The, with the kitchen and without the kitchen. That's yeah, okay. The ask of that specific little little square there. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. And so right. So the ones that have those handwritten notes, those are the revised plans that we're reviewing and approving. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. Great. And I think I uh, I did read in the uh, letter from Mr. Prondack that the the expansion itself, the actual building, complies with the underlying zoning. Right. You're not violating any setbacks or any height limitations. Um, you're building something that fits within the zoning envelope for the property. And the only question that's before the board is the use that's inside the property, right? That the temporary use for an in-law apartment. Okay. Um, and I also see that you had some outreach to your neighbors. Um, we, I have two letters um, from the owner of nine Emerson, which is the property immediately to your left and yeah. from 296 granite the property immediately to your right um yeah. which are i think you're on a corner lot so those are the yes. two the two properties that actually um Most are adjacent impactful. to your property right. um and they uh they've written in support of your projects and then um we don't have copies of but i've, I've heard you tell us that the owners of 15 and 19 yeah. I, just emailed them. I just emailed them to you I'm oh sorry. great okay I'm sorry. And those are the two next closest neighbors uh, on your left. Okay. On, on our lot. Yeah. On to your lot. Okay. And did any of your neighbors uh, express any opposition or, or challenges with your project? No. no, I didn't hear any. We actually okay. uh, did uh, talk. Well, I think the, the beginning of this project with our in laws here, we did not want to expose because they were not vaccinated. So we. Sure. A little bit hesitant to reach out in person. So we did mail out actually across from the street and uh, from us, I think, uh, what number is that? The Granite app and then the one across, right across from the street from us. But we did not hear back. I assume they're, they're fine with. <laughs> I did not okay. have objections for it. Um, because but you, you, you notified them, you informed them about your project okay. and, um, and uh, no one got back to you expressing any objections, but you're for closest neighbors have written in support. Yes. Okay. Closest, most direct neighbors uh, got the support first. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, that's all I have for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Comey. All right. So this particular, so as I mentioned in my introductory remarks, there are two things that, that the Board of Appeals has to do with this case. The first one is grant a special permit allowing you to have a temporary apartment. And the second thing is to provide a variance to one section of that bylaw, which says that the exist that the apartment would have to be contained completely within the existing structure. Okay, and so I just want that to be clear to to everyone that um, what exactly we have to do. So you could, for example, um, let's talk about the special permit portion of it. Okay, this particular section of the bylaw. I remember it at town meeting, it, there was a lot of discussion about it. There are a lot of requirements, a lot of elements that have to be met in uh, to grant the uh, special permit. And I think, you've, I think you have covered them all, but I just wanna 
go through them very quickly in my, you know, to make sure that we've covered all the bases and it's in the record. All right. So one of the requirements is that uh, basically the, the project has to be done by the owner. So uh, uh, who, so who owns the property right now? We both oh. do. Both do. Okay. So that's, and, and you intend to live in this, this is a, a silly question. I know, but I'm, you would just to put it on the record, you intend to live in this property when you're done, you're going to occupy it. Oh, yes. Otherwise, we would not do anything with it. <laughs> <laughs> Will you, I, this is again in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the bylaw itself. So will you be living in the, there's sort of like uh, the primary built, the primary structure and then the temporary apartment. So it's, it's your attempt to, in, to remain in the primary structure and that your in-laws would be in the temporary apartment. For sure, I'm, I, so, I'm, I'm yeah. gonna live in that. Because it, it asks who's living there. <laughs> okay. That's why I'm asking the question. So, um, okay, so, and, and uh, the, uh, it, it, the, the, the folks that are living with you, they're going to be, they're your in-laws. So that's, we've met the family relationship test. Um, okay, let's just see if there's anything else. We, you've submitted a design that shows the layout and shows how you're going to incorporate, reincorporate the, basically the kitchen back into the dwelling after it's no longer used as a special, sorry, as a temporary apartment. So you've given that. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, I think that you've you've met the various elements for the, you know, the, the, that your application needs to contain for the special permit. So with that that part is good. I don't think I have any further questions except this. Yeah. I'll just I'll wait till we get to the discussion. That's that's fine. Let's see if there. Are, I'll stop talking now. Let's see if there are any members of the public that have any questions of the applicant. We have no one. All right. Are there any members of the public uh, that wish to add, uh, sorry, speak in support of the application? There's no one. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak in opposition to the application? No. All right. That being said, is there anything further that uh, the applicant would like to add? Or is, at this time, is there anything else you want us to know? Just your sort of last chance here. <laughs> like to thank last, you. Just, just saying if there's anything else. Well, we'd like to thank you yeah. all for your, uh, I know that you have a very busy schedule with all the projects going on. We appreciate your time and, uh, and thank you so much, Beth, for um, walking me through this process. You're welcome, of course. All right, well, I think that concludes the evidentiary portion of the hearing. Let's move to discussing the application in open session. Uh, Ms. Joffrey, would you like, uh, Joffrey, sorry, would you like to go first? Um, sure. It, thank you, Mr. Chair, for walking through the requirements of for meeting the special permit, which um, appear to clearly be met. I think what would be helpful for me is to hear from the chair and Mr. Conley on the the second aspect, which um, refers to the variance and the existing structure and um, your thoughts on on that particular aspect. So that's a, I'll just jump in. That's an excellent point. Our, when town meeting discussed this particular zoning section, there was, uh, you know, obviously they put in this requirement that the temporary apartment be located completely within the existing dwelling. Um, and I understand the reasons for doing that, which is we didn't want a lot of two family houses popping up all over the place, right? I, I mean, I'm, that's my supposition. I should know because I was sitting there for the, for the discussion. I just, um, but the, I think in, in this particular, in, in a situation like this, right? The, the, the applicants could, as of right, build this addition without the temporary apartment do all the construction, right? Build the addition and then, then, and then put it in place uh, and then come to the Board of Appeals and ask for the variance, right? To say, can we please put, oh, now we, we, would, we wouldn't need a variance. Now we'd just come back and ask for the special permit, you see? And uh, then, they, then they would have to do construction again and add the, uh, add the, uh, the apartment in. Sorry, add the kit. Basically, put the kitchen back into the put the kitchen back in. Open up all the walls. Do all of the plumbing. So, 
as a as I think the applicants mentioned, um, it's not hard to see the financial and uh, hardship and the family disruption that would occur in that kind of sequencing. I think as your questioning brought out. Right. But also, uh, it's not lost on me that the, because it would extend the construction period, it would have a, an adverse impact on the neighborhood. So in it, to my thinking, um, in a situation like uh, on the facts that we have before us, it's not, it, it would be in the neighborhood's interest uh, as well to grant a variance in this instance uh, to the requirement that it's contained within the existing structure because it would shorten the disruption to the neighborhood of the construction. Uh, in addition to the all of the benefits it would provide to the family of a faster project and, and not basically wasting construction dollars. And we all know what it's like now trying to find, not only find people to do the work on the house, but also to, um, you know, to the, the cost of construction is going up all the time. So I, I can see that the longer the project was went out, you know, you're running the risk of uh, higher construction costs. So that's sort of maybe my wordy response to your question. <laughs> But I am happy to hear what, what Brian has to say about it. No, I, I agree with everything you said, Mr. Chair, right? In, in terms of at least it seems like the spirit of the ordinance here, um, we're getting to the same place, but saving the applicant and saving the neighborhood some unnecessary disruption. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So for that, those reasons, I would tend to support this application for both the special permit. Um, and also for the granting of the variance uh, to the subsection noted in the application to allow them to basically construct the temporary apartment at the same time as the uh, as the addition. So, do you guys agree with that? I agree, Mr. Chairman. All right, maybe we I do agree. <laughs> I do agree. It's, I, I have to say it's, it's almost like a little philosophical to me. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Try to wrap my mind around it, but it makes completely complete sense this it, way. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the way I look at it is it it well, whatever. It just it just it would seem to be a waste of resources and time. Yes, I agree. Require them to sequence the project in a different way, only to end up in the same place. Right, right? and it's and, the whole purpose of the project. I think. Right. Um, so. <laughs> With that in mind, let's. Uh, if uh, is any more discussion, are we ready for a vote? Yes. All right. All those in favor of granting the special permit for the in-law apartment and the uh, variance to the subsection noted, please say aye. 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 All opposed? None. Congratulations. Uh, very much. Thank your, you, everyone. Uh, special permit has been granted, and your uh, your variance is also granted. Um, I wanted just to remind you of two points. There's probably more I should remind you of, but the, the, there's two that come to mind. The first thing is that one of the requirements of this bylaw is that your special permit is good, I think, for four years, which yes. means that prior to that time, if, you, if in four years' time you would like to extend the special permit to continue to have the in-law apartment there, you need to come back to the Board of Appeals and ask for an extension. It's not a problem, but you need to maybe, you know, six months ahead of time, maybe even a year, I don't know how long it'll take, you know, but get it, get CBEV, get it on, you know, make the application again for the extension, put it on your calendar, right? Yeah, three years, three years from now, <laughs> I'll put it on my calendar as a reminder. Right, that it is to repair an extension that uh, when it is lapsed, okay? Uh, and the second thing is that you'll need to record probably both the special permit and the variance at the Registry of Deeds in Norfolk. It's in, uh, sorry, in Norfolk County Registry of Deeds, which is in Dedham. So get that on record because that, that, that's part of the, you know, the documenting the uh, permission that you have to, to build this. I believe that's the case. Board members, if I'm wrong on that, but I think it does, I think it's supposed to be recorded. Um, I bring that permission to the Registry of Deeds? So yeah, once we issued the like, so I don't remember if you were sitting in at the end of the last hearing, but basically the next thing that happens is probably I will, unless unless Giselle really wants to write this decision, I'll 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 take this one on, write the write the decision. It'll get filed with the town clerk, and then there's an appeal period for 20 days. If no right, if no one no one objects in the 20 days, then the decision becomes final, 
And at that point, you can take it and basically record it at the Registry of Deeds to document uh, that your, 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 your building is authorized to have the temporary apartment and the variance. Okay, and then Mr. Prondak can issue the building permit as well. Thank you. And you can get going. All right. Thank you for the detailed explanation. You're welcome. I, I probably are. forgot something, but that's those are the that's what I remember. <laughs> no, you know the coats way better. All right. <laughs> uh, congratulations and thank you very much for uh, coming out tonight. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you. All right. Just in one moment, and we'll call our final hearing. Let's set up. All right, uh, Brian and Giselle, are you guys ready to go? Ready. All right. So let's have our, our eight o'clock hearing of the Board of Appeals. Uh, this is for an application of I don't know, Mr. Is it Mr. Kapoor, is it? Kapoor, yes. First name Alok? Alok. Alok. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, yep. Alok Kapoor of 11 Countryside Lane is filing um, a, uh, an application for a variance. Uh, I'm not sure how much uh, you sat in on the prior meetings, but the, the basic procedure is I will, I'll read the, uh, the, uh, the legal ad into the record and uh, then go over the various materials that we've received, then ask you to uh, present, uh, tell us whatever you want to tell us about your case, and then we'll hear from members of the public and questions and all of that. All right. So with that, I will, uh, let's see, this is the application of Alok Kapoor of uh, 11 Countryside Lane. Uh, the application is dated March 15th, 2021. And the applicant is proposing to build a 10.5 foot by 22.5 foot second level addition to an existing one story accessory pool house in the rear of the property located at 11 Countryside Lane. The property uh, lies in a residence A zoning district, a plot plan dated 9-20-2020, September 20th of 2020 shows that this second level addition would be built at a distance of 13.1 feet from the right side property line when 15 feet are normally required under section 6C1 of the Milton zoning bylaws. Note single story accessory structures are permitted to be at a distance of 10 feet from the sidelines. The applicant is requesting a variance from the provisions of section 6C1 to build the second floor addition at a distance of, my, this, we already had this, but it's in here, I'm gonna read it, at a distance of 13.1 feet from the right side of the property line, rather than the 15 feet normally required by section 6C1, all as therein set forth in said application and plans on file with the board and open to public inspection. Uh, the materials that we've received as part of the application are, uh, in addition to the applicant itself, application itself, are the denial letter from uh, the building inspector, Mr. Prondak, uh, about uh, uh, denying the building permit because of the uh, need of variance. We've got a plot plan by Donald G. Rosa, uh, dated, looks like uh, February 18th of 2021, that shows the layout of the lot and all of the, uh, where the pool house is, and a schematic that shows a, uh, what looks to be a, a, a framing layout for the second floor uh, uh, deck of the new pool house. Uh, and so, oops, sorry, here's some more, some additional uh, uh, sketches and drawings of what the pool house will look like. We have an elevation and a, uh, also a floor plan and a plan for the roof. Um, to my record, we've received uh, at least at least what was sent to me, at least one letter in, of support 
an email from the Callahans of 193 Whittier Road, uh, who say uh, uh, in an email dated April 23rd of this year, we are writing this letter to share our support for our neighbor, neighbor Alok Kapoor to proceed with his construction project, adding a second floor to his pool house with the intended use as a gallery slash memorial room in remembrance of his wife. Our backyards are adjacent and separated by a fence and we have no concerns about this project. Uh, that's the material that I've got. And with that, we, we hear what's here from the applicants. So Mr. Uh, Kapoor, sorry. Um, welcome to the Board of Appeals. Good evening. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Great. So um, thanks, it actually helped sitting through uh, the others. So I get a feel for how this- Lucky you. <laughs> works um so uh, as you as you got from the callahan so uh my wife and i quick background my wife and i moved here in uh, 2016 we have a seven-year-old daughter and a dog uh, that are that are in the home full-time last year my wife was diagnosed with mental cell lymphoma and she passed last june and so it was fairly quick um and this idea came in talking with my brother-in-law her brother around creating a room to memorialize her, creating some space that um, uh, photos, artwork, um, memorabilia to kind of memorialize my wife, envision this being a place that our seven-year-old can kind of grow up visiting and going to and, and, and reflect and, and think about her mom. Um, we're trying to avoid using the room because if you look at that, it's a, it's a decent size home. So one might say, well, why not just use one of the bedrooms in the house? I have four older children, I'm divorced, remarried. so. Uh, Elizabeth, our seven-year-old is with me now, each of the other rooms is assigned to each of the other kids. And my preference would be not to take one of them and repurpose that room, right? Because uh, it, just, it just wouldn't feel right. So so, um, so the idea is take the, you know, add a second floor to the pool house um, and turn that into almost like a gallery-like room where we can hang things on the wall and have it be kind of a place of, of memorializing and, and reflecting and thinking about uh, my wife, Carrie. Um, the structure is maintaining the same dimensions as it is today. So um, we're not, we're really just building straight up from what's there. Um, and then the pergola that's, that is, um, faces the pool would just be uh, flattened to turn into a deck area. So, so you could sort of walk out from that gallery type of room. Um, I talked to my neighbors, the Callahans, which is the, the, the largest adjacent area that's really the only neighbors i because they're the most affected by it that i talked to and and they were extremely supportive um i did email bob and gert sweeney and have an email back from them that bob sweeney is the indian cliffs association president for the kind of the neighborhood um i wanted him aware of what was happening in case there were any issues he didn't have any issues it's not it, it wasn't an email of support he just said thanks for notifying me and um and I wanted to make sure that the association knew what I was doing. Um, and I think that's, I guess I'll stop there and take questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Connolly, do you have any questions? This evening? Uh, <clears throat> sure, Mr. Kapoor, thanks for your time tonight and sorry for your loss. Um, the, um, I did take a look at your plans and um, the, if I, I think you just said this, the your current building um, that you're building over uh, is 13.1 feet from the uh, lot line, uh, you know, where the uh, 15 feet would be required when you go two stories. You're not intensifying um, the proximity to the lot line. Is that right? It's just going to be the, the same distance, but just two stories instead of right. one story? Exactly yeah, okay. Right. Uh, we're, we're less than, uh, I suppose, was two feet within the setback. Um, and you have a, a letter of support. You mentioned that this is against your side property line. That is the side yeah. against 193 Whittier, where the Callahans live. So they'd yeah. be the, the most affected about her, and they've, they've sent us there's a letter. There's a lot of trees. That, right. And there's a lot of trees yeah. back there that kind of hide this section of the, of the property. Um, yeah, but I'm going to make sure they knew what I was doing because they're obviously that's the closest um, sort of home. Yep. Okay. And um, and the variance we're just looking at uh, one factor we consider is among others is the shape of the lot. I, I don't think I've ever seen a lot shaped like this. I guess it's uh, an eight-sided object, but I don't think there's a word for it. But I uh, 
it does sort of strike me as an irregularly shaped lot if we could uh, note for the record um, and uh, beyond that I see that you have submitted plans and you are going to uh, if approved build it in accordance with the plans that you've submitted to us yes yeah okay right. uh, okay I don't have uh, any further questions mr. chair all right thank you very much uh, Brian uh, Ms. Joffer, any questions for the applicant? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Kapoor, I, I think this is a beautiful idea and I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Right. I, I wanna just be clear on what, what my understanding is, which is that you actually aren't sort of moving any closer to the boundary. You're just going up a floor. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Thank you. That's, we also that's try to keep question. the project as simple as can be, and and in talking with, um, you know, the colleague that helped me with the plans, that sounded like keeping the same boundaries, the same perimeters, everything as is, keeps the construction as simple as can be. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. I don't think I have any additional questions. I think I would uh, just emphasize something that was in the original. Uh, legal notice, which is that the, the reason we're here, the reason that you need a variance is that the, when the pool house was built as a single story structure, it complied with the terms of the zoning bylaw because it, it, it needed to be no closer than 10 feet and it's 13.1. Now, because you're adding the second story, the bylaw, a literal you know, interpretation of it, it says it needs to be 15 feet. So you're basically looking for um, permission to build it slightly under two feet uh, closer to the line than you would now be required uh, right. to do so. And is, uh, you, you, as Mr. Conley pointed out, your lot is very, uh, is, is one of the more unusually shaped lots mm -hmm. that, we've, that, that I've seen in town. And um, I mentioned it as Mr. Conley brought up because the, the requirements for a allowing a variance, the standard for allowing a variance is, tougher to meet than the special permit one we had like in the first part of the hearing. And one of the factors that um, can be used or is uh, helpful to have in the granting of a variance is where the lot is of an unusual shape or the topography is different on your property than from uh, adjoining ones. Is there anything, is there a, uh, can you talk just a little bit about how, it, I mean, if you, if you build this memorial here at the pool house, is there a anything else about the yard that makes that spot a particularly good one? Beside it? That's a that's a great question. Um, I mean, I actually looked with uh, my my brother in law, who's kind of in the trades, and and uh, other colleagues around kind of the the land in terms of where else could we could we do this? Um, and this this it's, there's nothing particular about the top, topography as to it being there other than this seemed like the path of least resistance. There's a structure that's already there that we would build up on versus creating a new structure somewhere else or, or an add-on that there didn't seem to be a logical place yeah. with the home, right? In terms of, in terms of where we would do it. Um, we, I had visions, in fact, you know, my wife's last Christmas before she passed, I had I had gifted her I say quote unquote gifted because we would go through the process together. Um, she she wanted like a in, in the lot the part of the lot behind our fence that's sort of a, a wooded area almost like a, a shed back there like a like something that she could garden in and something that she could kind of go and reflect and so one of my Christmas presents to her was that we'll we'll go through the process and we'll we'll um we'll figure out how to do something back there. So one thought was, well, why not make good on that promise, even though she's not here, and turn that into. But it's it's fairly wooded back there. It's sort of um, it's just it, it seemed far less practical than taking. We have this existing pool home, and let's just use the structure and and build up. And so that's that's really how I landed where, you know. Okay, and if, if say for example, you positioned the. I mean, just as a just as a hypothetical, you positioned the memorial. Uh, building, I don't want to call it a shed, but right. in, in that wooded lot in the back, and the, the, it would sort of, def uh, I want to say, def 
certainly one of the purposes that I you said earlier was to have your seven year old daughter be able to conveniently. Um, you're, you're exact. You're exactly right. Like yeah. So there's no easy access to get back there. I'm thinking, how often are we going to you know go back there? Obviously, there's no electrical or anything like that back there right now. So it it become it, it would turn into a fairly lengthy process. And you know, this kind of place. I mean, obviously, it's still it's it's only been a year, so this is very still very real for her. But I mean, she, we we have a mama's corner in our home right now where every night she visits, and it's just part of our process. And so I I want this room to be a special place for her. All right, thank you. I don't think I have yep. any any further questions. Let's see if there's any member of the public that has any questions of the applicant. No, there's no one. That is indicating there is no are no hands raised. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak in support of the application? No. All right. Are there any members of the public that need, uh, would like to speak in opposition to the application? No. All right then. Is there anything further that the applicant would like to add? Just a, a, a same thank you that the other said. I, I couldn't have got through this process, Bev, without your help. I really, really, this is the first time I've done something like this. So it's a whole foreign concept to me. I, I, I've gotten to appreciate how the process works and seeing you all in action. So thanks for your consideration. Absolutely. Thank you. Be kind to us. All right. Well, not hearing others having a, no, no one, uh, no members of the public wishing to speak, I guess uh, I will close the evidence portion of the hearing. And uh, we'll discuss your application here in open session. Uh, any either of my board members like to go first? Sure, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'm uh, supportive of this request. Um, I think the scope of the variance is very limited in scope, and for the reasons we established, uh, you know, including the irregularly shaped lot and the practicality where it's located, I think a variance is justified. Um, and uh, I think it's a proposal the, the board should support. Very good, Ms. Schaffer. I agree. I think the two foot difference is minimal, especially taking into consideration that there's already a structure there. Well, that's sort of within the 13 feet, though it's one story. And um, as I said, I think it's it's a great idea. I support it. Very good, and I second the comments of my colleagues. I too think it's a it's a it's a good idea. I think your addition is addition. The 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 change for your pool house is is uh, tastefully done. I think it uh, is a not that this is a requirement in the granting of the variance, but it, I think it will, uh, you know, be a place where your daughter can experience some healing and uh, time with her mother in the best way that she can and. That there would be a hardship in if if you were required to build this structure in the woods that are very isolated from your house. I can you know it's I haven't seen the lot in person, but I imagine you know it would be better to have a seven year old nearer by near the pool there rather than uh, you know a hundred feet or more into that wooded lot in the back. So for all of those reasons, um, the fact that it's a de minimis kind of uh, we're only asking for 1.9 feet. It's no worse than the existing structure and that your, your neighbors most directly effective have, have uh, consented to it. Uh, I'm, I would be in favor of also granting this variance uh, uh, this evening. So for all those in favor say uh, signif of granting the variance, please say aye. Aye. Congratulations. You have uh, on the granting of your variance, as I told the folks before, um, it'll be a, a couple of weeks or so before we will, we have to write a, a, write a decision. We'll get that decision written, uh, be circulated for signature, uh, will be filed with the town clerk, and then there'll be a 20 day appeal period. At the expiration of that appeal period, you can uh, speak with the building and commissioner about getting your building permit allowed, assuming no one has objected. Uh, and then as I told the previous applicants, it's important for you to make sure that the copy of the decision granting the variance and uh, with the variance will be built into is recorded at the Registry of Deeds in Dedham so that um, it's documented in your title. Got it. Um, Thank you so much. You're very it's welcome. Lot, I mean, it's a lot to our family. So again, we're, we're all very sorry for your loss and are happy to, uh, you know, uh, facilitate this this project in the, the small area that we're uh, that we're working in. 
Um, let's see. And Mr. Chair, I'm happy. I think it, I'm up next to write the, write the decision. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, with that, I don't think there is any further business to come before the Board of Appeals this evening, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second that. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. All right, good. Thank you very much uh, We uh, for attending the Board of Appeals hearing tonight, and I'm sure we'll be back more later. And this, uh, this may be the last Zoom meeting uh, for the Board of Appeals for some time, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Stay tuned for where we're going to be located uh, in the future. Thank you and good evening. Yeah. And good I night. just want to say thank you. This is actually my very first non 40B hearing. <laughs>